Hi there, I'm Hugh McGuire. I'm the founder of Pressbooks, which is an online digital textbook making platform built on top of WordPress. Hi, and I'm Mike Nelson. I'm the developer of Print My Blog WordPress plugin. And today we're talking about democratizing the other publishing, WordPress's tools for creating offline documents. Thanks for joining us, and it's nice to digitally meet you. So what do we mean by the other publishing? WordPress's mission is to democratize publishing, and one interpretation of that is that anyone should, uh, should be able to freely write and share their content online on a web page. Um, but that's not what most of us think of when we hear publishing. Publishing usually means books, magazines, uh, what else we have? Newspapers, documents, those sort of things. And so can WordPress be used for that? Um, and are there any tools available for that? And uh, those are some of the questions we're going to be addressing and talking about today. Has anyone ever asked you to explain the difference between Microsoft Word and WordPress? And maybe you struggled with uh, defining exactly what the difference is, because they do share quite a bit in common. They both have a nice little editor that will write formatted text. Um, but when it comes down to it, the big difference is that uh, WordPress is for, ma is for making web pages, and Word is for making documents and all the other books and the other things we talked about as far as offline publishing. So we're wanting to think about uh, challenging that idea and using uh, WordPress for something that's usually Microsoft Word and Google Docs domain. Uh, I see there being some important differences between WordPress and Microsoft Word and Google Docs. For starters, WordPress is open source. That means that you can know what the code is doing, you can read it, you can change it even. Whereas Microsoft Word is closed source. You can't know exactly what it's doing or how it's going about it, and you can't change it. WordPress, you keep the data private. Uh, I'm talking about self-hosted WordPress. The data stays on your server, you can export it, you can make your backups, you can share them, you can keep them private if you want. Whereas uh, certainly Google Docs, I'm not so sure about Microsoft Word, but the data is ultimately in their hands. They decide how they're going to uh, store it and back it up, uh, keep it available or not, and uh, keep it private or not. WordPress has a huge plugin ecosystem and theme ecosystem and all the uh, developers that you can find um, to write your uh, WordPress custom code or or create WordPress websites for you. Um, whereas Microsoft Word and Google Docs have a more limited uh, ecosystem like that. The last important difference is they separate design in WordPress. So your content is separate from your design, which is your theme. That might be gain turned on its head with Gutenberg and uh, page builders. Um, but by and large, I think that still is quite true, that you are creating your content, you're writing your content, and then you're designing separately. So you can have two people or two organizations uh, taking responsibility for the separate uh, spheres. Whereas with Microsoft Word and Google Docs, you're, it's a little more kind of the two are squished together. Um, so it seems to me that there's, I much prefer to work in the WordPress world than the Microsoft Word or Google Docs world, but is that possible? Now I bet uh, with some justification some of you are probably thinking, uh, but WordPress is blogging software or WordPress isn't used for writing offline documents, that's not what it's designed for. And that's a fair point. Um, of course, WordPress has surprised us again and again with, you know, despite all the people in the forum saying that, you know, no, it's WordPress isn't a CMS, it's just for blogging. Um, it's been used for uh, business websites, e-commerce, social networks, learning management systems. So I 
maybe it's a challenge, but uh, I feel like it's not too much of a stretch to also apply it to uh, offline publishing. And that's how I got into creating my plugin. Um, but uh, amusingly, after I created it, and it was just something I did on the side, uh, I found out that actually that this is something that a lot of other people have thought of. Um, principally, um, my uh, co-presenter today, Hugh, um, he had been already in it for a decade. So um, I, th I felt like it would be good um, to have a bit of his story on how he got started on it way back then and his approach uh, to doing uh, offline publishing with WordPress. Hugh. Hi there. Um, I'm just going to give you a short little history of, of Pressbooks and where we come from and where we are now. Um, Pressbooks started back in 2011. And it came out a lot of thinking I was doing in the open ecosystem um, where I was present already thinking about different ways to publish books. And Pressbooks was built really as a platform that makes it just as easy to make a book um, as it is to make a website. And it seemed at the time like using a powerful open source CMS was the best way to go. Um, and WordPress at the time was really the only option that I considered. It was a tool that I'd been using myself as a blogger and tinkerer. Um, and so it was just such a familiar, powerful platform to start building, um, something that eventually turned into Pressbooks. Um, the core work that we've done in Pressbooks, which operates as a plugin for multi-site, um, was to rebuild the admin interface so that it was suited to publishing long-form content or books, um, to build out a more book-like reading interface um, so you could easily get to a table of contents for sort of a self-contained um, package of content. Um, as well as building the export format. So uh, particularly back then, it was a critical component was I wanted to have something that could um, not just have a web version of a book, but also easily export into formats like uh, EPUB, which is the standard format for eBooks, PDF, which either is just a downloadable format or PDF particularly designed for print, which is what Pressbooks um, produces. And the idea behind Pressbooks from the earliest days was to enable new models of long form or book publishing to emerge. And the idea was to take advantage of the web, not just um, from the perspective of the ease of making tools for the web, but also thinking about how books could um, expand how they are in the, inter in the universe if they were um, full citizens of the web. But in the early days, the real interest was from self-publishers, um, a number of small publishers, academic presses, and a, a number of entities that were looking at experimenting with digital publishing, like Wall Street Journal, Newsweek, and a bunch of other cool projects like that. Um, but Pressbooks was relatively small. Uh, it was really the embrace uh, back in 2012 uh, by the open education movement that really uh, led us towards our niche. And since around 2017, that's where we've focused um, almost exclusively on developing Pressbooks as a platform for creating, adapting, uh, and sharing digital textbooks. Our main clients are higher ed institutions. Um, so places like University of Minnesota, like the City University of New York, like um, Michigan State University, uh, Maricopa Community Colleges. Um, and these institutions work with us to provide press books to their faculty um, to create uh, or adapt digital textbooks. And we now see an ecosystem of thousands of open educational resources or digital textbooks um, from something like 200 institutions that we work with. Uh, and in a moment, I'll show you the platform itself. Hi there, I'm just going to do a little tour here of Pressbooks, um, and we're going to start with the Pressbooks directory. So this is something relatively new in our universe, but um, we have a number of 
higher ed clients out there um, who are publishing open educational resources or digital textbooks on Pressbooks. And this directory is a way to find all of them. Um, show you what a book looks like. Um, so here's a Pressbooks book. Uh, this is built whoops, on, uh, on Pressbooks. Here's the web version of what that book looks like. Um, I have some information about the book, about the author. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like to read. You can download various copies of the book, which I'll show you in a minute. And then here's a full table of contents and some metadata about the book itself. Um, if we were to click through to one of the chapters, here's uh, a chapter four, Membrane at Rest. So you can see that this is a well-built uh, educational resource. So there's um, nice images, uh, videos, um, there's some examples uh, with some mathematical equations here. Um, and this is built using MathJack, so we can zoom trigger factor, double click. And if we double click, then we see that in nice and big. Um, key takeaways, and then there's a test here down here. So potassium is concentrated inside, sodium outside inside and outside and let's see how we did we'll check that oh i did three out of four that's not bad um, and then you can continue on and do other stuff here um, check that out um, and if you were to do this and you got it right you might go to the next one and do this and that's wrong but you can retry that uh, etc some additional information from the author here and then they've added a video version of the lesson which is great so this is a standard book uh, on the web. This is um, sizable if you want to look at it on an iPhone or iPad or on your, uh, on your desktop. Whoops, and that's not what I wanted to do. Um, and if you, if you go back to the book and let's say you wanted to download and have a print version, you could down, uh, download that and, whoops, and um, can I show you a print version? Let's find out. No. Uh, I'll show you print version a little bit later um, to show you what that looks like. Um, but there you go. That's a Pressbooks book as it's outputted. Um, and this is what it looks like in the back end. So it's very familiar to you if you're from the WordPress press universe. But we have done some pretty big uh, changes to Pressbooks. So if we were, this is um, if you're in your uh, Pressbooks system of, let's say, your institution. So this is what the dashboard of Pressbooks looks like. Um, so this is a book, this is the back end. this is what an author or contributor to a book would see. Would see. Um, here, if we go to the book info page, this has the title, so I might wanna um, clone number one, or I wanna change some information here. Um, here's the original authors. I think I'll add a new contributor, um, and I'm not gonna go through the details of that, but I could add myself as, as a contributor to this. Um, and there's a whole lot of other metadata that you can add about the book, copyright year, who the copyright holder is, what the license is, etc. cetera. Um, moving along here, this is what a chapter looks like. And you can edit this. So this, again, is very familiar to you. We have a, a set of tools that you can use here um, it's around formatting. Uh, text boxes, so you might want to insert a, uh, let's say we wanted to insert an example. Um, and put some content here. Um, and then maybe down here, you might want to insert uh, some new learning objectives and you would type your content in here, etc. cetera. Um, so very nice, simple, straightforward, WordPressy kind of tool. Um, next thing we might want to do is make sure that it looks like we want it to look and we're going to choose a theme here. We have a collection of themes to choose from and where is the one that I want? I think it's called Malala. So here it is. So we've activated that theme. Um, we have a set of theme options that you can look at. So uh, in particular, we could explain how we want the PDF to look. Um, and then we can go to export the file and choose the different formats we want and export and there you go. Um, 
so this is a PDF export. And again, Pressbooks was built to take that HTML. We use a, um, some tools to use HTML and CSS to create a print PDF of a book. I showed you that book earlier, uh, Foundations of Neuroscience from uh, Michigan State University. And here is a uh, PDF version. This is built for print on demand. So you could send this, excuse me, to a print on demand um, service provider like Lulu or Amazon CreateSpace and get a print version. We currently don't connect directly, although that's something uh, in the plans. Um, and you can see this is designed, this actually is the digital version. So there's a print version where these links don't show up because they don't look nice in print. Uh, but this is a digital version of the PDF. So a student or, or uh, anyone can download this um, content. So they've always got it with them. And you can see it's very well laid out, um, looks good and slick and professional. And this is coming straight out of Pressbooks. A um, couple of things to note here. Um, it's customizable, so there's different kinds of themes. You can uh, change uh, all sorts of different kinds of things. Also, anytime there's a video element, etc., we just provide a link uh, back to the page where that, that was shown. Um, so there you go. It's uh, straightforward, clean looking outputs um, and makes it easy to have that offline universe uh, working at the same time as the online universe. Uh, with the same content that gets uh, exported directly. There are ways to select certain kind of content that you might only show on the web or only in print, um, but I won't go into too much detail. But as you can see, it's a nice looking output here. Um, and actually, I think since I'm showing here, I can uh, show you here is an example of a different kind of book, but this was actually done with University of British Columbia Press in the early days, and this actually comes out of Pressbooks, so very professional looking um, typesetting and, and design. And here is another example um, of a more sort of uh, textbooky type thing. Um, uh, this is exported from Pressbooks as well. So all of this stuff is live on the web, and then you press a button and poof, out it comes in PDF. And I've always found that exciting that you can get a website to turn into a beautiful book uh, using CSS. So there you go. Um, I'm going to stop sharing now. Great. Thanks, Hugh. I'm now going to demo the next plugin, which is Anthologize. Anthologize is about 10 years old. It was kind of a community effort by various uh, institutions. It's been mostly recently maintained by uh, Boone Gorges. Uh, and uh, it's totally free. I suppose the only way you could spend money on it is if you were to uh, fund future development. But let's jump into it. It doesn't require any registration. You just activate it on your website and you can create various projects. Um, so you, the, the difference between it and Pressbooks is that instead of Pressbooks being sort of one website and book all at the same time, Anthologize you create separate projects and you can just select specific posts or pages or other custom post types. So here I have a pretend uh, a website where um, I pretended there's it's for some sort of WordPress 101 class. And in this class all the students have made final projects which are they've created a post for each project explaining some way that they've used WordPress. And I've already got it mostly set up. So here's how you uh, edit the parts of a project. So you, I have parts about, about the class, which is kind of an introductory part, and then student projects, where there's each of the student's projects is one of these posts here. And uh, you can drag and drop, which is just great. And you can filter. Uh, by tags and post types. I'm going to scroll down to uh, another one. I'm going to add another post. And one thing that's different uh, between Anthologize and several of the other ones is that whenever you add projects or add posts to a project um, and then you edit that post, you're only editing the version that will be included in the project. So this can be handy in case you need to uh, change some of the wording or maybe there's some parts in the post that don't really make sense in a book. You can just change them in the project and it won't affect 
the actual uh, post on the website. So let's go to um, export. More meta information you can enter like authors and copyright. And uh, I'm just going to move along creating the PDF. There's a bunch more off options here. I just add it, tell it to add, put each post on a separate page, and there it's downloaded. And Anthologize does not have different uh, designs or themes like Pressbooks, that it just has those few s options there. So it's a little bit more bare bones in, in terms of design, but it looks pretty good. Here's a table of contents with working hyperlinks. And um, here's some images that were in the posts. And overall, it looks pretty decent. And uh, you, if you if keeping it free is important to you, then it's, uh, this doesn't get much much freer. Um, oh, I forgot to show you uh, another format. You can also export to EPUB, which is great for reading from um, you know, phones and uh, that sort of thing. And EPUB is quite easily converted into uh, the format supported by uh, Amazon Kindle in case you want to use that. But EPUB is the format, I think it's used in Apple Books and pretty well everything except for Amazon Kindle uses EPUB. Right now though I'm opening this up in a Caliber on my computer which doesn't look quite so good in Caliber but um, I think uh, Caliber would be would be good if it uh, if it resized a bit better. Yes, yeah, so you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, and so here's our book in an EPUB, and looks great on a phone because it, it reflows, it it uh, it resizes the the page according to the page of th the size of the device. And I think that's about it for Anthologize. Moving right along, here we're going to now demo MPL Publisher, which is newer but quite similar to Anthologize. It's premium, so there's a free and paid versions. It's quite a simple interface. Um, you enter your book details on the left, choose content on the right. You can uh, create different books in the premium version. And uh, of course you can filter by post type and status and categories. So you just check off the items you want to include in your book, get them in the right order and uh, you can download your file. Here I'm going to download the PDF first. Here's a little pop-up. Like I'm just going to save it first and then open it up. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Little table of contents. There's our introduction post. Here's my textbook about sea life of Massachusetts. Looks pretty good. I skipped right over mentioning there's some other formats too which are interesting. Um, like you export to Microsoft Word and audiobooks. Audiobooks is a cool one I think. Here I'll just show you a, a short audiobook. And we'll save it and open it up again. Sea Life of Massachusetts. Michael Nelson. 1. Actinia, or sea anemone. Matridium marginatum edw. Nothing can be more unprepossessing than a sea anemone when contracted. A mm -hmm. mere so that sounds pretty good. And the final two features I want to highlight about MPL Publishers book chapters. So these are posts that will only appear in your uh, here, I'll just call it conclusion. These are posts that will only appear in your books, so they won't appear on the website. So you can add like a, con a conclusion, um, and you can include it in your books. Oops, uh, back. I don't know. I should have pressed that there. Sorry. And now there's our conclusion. I can check that off and add it to our book. And uh, it also has designs, just like Pressbooks. 
And so overall, this is a pretty quick and easy uh, option for creating books, or in this case, a, a textbook, from your posts and other content in WordPress. Now we come to my plugin, Print My Blog. Uh, where Print My Blog differs from the others is I've been, it's a bit newer, and it focuses uh, more on integration with other plugins and working with WordPress's Gutenberg editor and that sort of thing. So for the demo, I'm going to actually demo it alongside a different plugin, a knowledge-based plugin called BasePress. And so what, I'll first just quickly tell you what BasePress is, does. Uh, I added this, what I'm calling a school catalog section for the website. And so this just has information about the school, like about our, the college, policies, and uh, also has um, sort of information on what classes are offered. Here's all the business classes. Here's all the computer engineering classes, for example. And so this is all added by no, uh, by BasePress. So it's sort of a knowledge base, or in this case, a school catalog. So I'm going to now use Print My Blog to create a PDF file that we can print out from that content. So here we go, activating Print My Blog. Yay, thank you for welcoming me. And I'm also going to activate a uh, custom design that I've created for Print My Blog. So this is just like like another WordPress theme, but for uh, projects created within Print My Blog. And it's all documented how to create these things. If you're familiar with creating themes, you will be quite familiar with uh, creating a, a custom design. So here we go, Print My Blog. It has projects just like Anthologize. Here I've already created one. Uh, currently, Print My Blog only offers two different formats for exporting. Digital PDFs, where it'll keep hyperlinks and they have generally have more colors. And print my print ready PDFs where it'll usually remove hyperlinks, maybe replace them with footnotes or page references, and uh, keep everything um, sort of non-interactive. So I'm gonna be doing a print ready PDF. This one, I'm going to be using the uh, custom design called College Branded. I'm going to move right along to the content editor. So on the left, I choose what content I want to add to the project. So this is all posts and pages that are available. I can again filter by post type and status and categories and all that. And on the right is what's in the project. So here I have my title page and table of contents. And then the main matter, sort of the main part of the book, has content just like in the, uh, the, the knowledge base uh, school as, or also in the school catalog on the front end. So here we have a section about, about the college with subsections of college mission statement, goals, and history. And here's the section on information uh, and policies with the subsections in it. And by the way, these are all, you can drag and drop these. And then here we have the, the different programs. So here's the business programs with 100 and 200 computer engineering. We can uh, add new stuff pretty easily or remove it pretty easily. So I mean, you can, uh, oops, I overdid. I clicked too many times there. Refresh and undo that. Anyway, so we'll move right along to uh, generating the uh, file. So here is what we call the print page, and this is an opportunity for JavaScript to run before uh, the content is, is sent for to the PDF. So this can be helpful for some plugins. Uh, where they need to run JavaScript to get the content ready. And then we just download the uh, watermarked test PDF. You can download as many of these as you want. So here we go. So this custom design adds the cute little WP Campus uh, WAPU on the first page. Here's our table of contents. Looks pretty good. And the design also adds the cute little WAPU in the corner on all the other 
uh, pages throughout the uh, the catalog. And let's scroll down to one last thing that's worth mentioning uh, is in this Business Administration 200, there's a link to Business Administration 100. Now, print my blog is on. You can't quite see it very well because it's there's this uh, water watermark in front of it. But it's replaced the hyperlink with a footnote down here. It says C page 11, which is of course where the business administration is uh, 100 is is located. And so you can you can create uh, obviously other content than just um, course catalogs. Um, but I thought that was uh, probably one of the more interesting uh, demos to show you. The last plugin where I'm going to be demoing is 8 Day Week by the WordPress agency 10up. And this is specifically for making uh, PDFs and files with InDesign. So you write your posts in WordPress as usual, and then 8 Day Week. Uh, Let's you organize them into print issues. It's basically the same thing as a project uh, in other plugins. And here we see this issue has got uh, two posts already included in it. You can add more. Let's add one from, uh, I can't remember. There we go, there's another one. And you just say you want to export them all. It'll create a uh, zip file. And the way you're intended to use this is that you have your content writers are in WordPress and they write the posts and everything in WordPress and then they create this zip file and then they send it over to the designers. So here we're switching over to designer mode here, or designer view. And designers will see all the uh, these files inside the zip file that have all the post content in it. They'll bring it over and they will have created a design. Here we're going to open up a, a template that looks like a pretty handy little magazine. And they're going to import those XML files. Uh, I'm not. I'm pretty new to InDesign, to be honest. So bear with me. And uh, and so here's our cool-looking design. Oh, I love it! It's so cool. And they go into the content of. They select the content and you drag it over into wherever you want it to appear in the post, and there it's appeared. I think I I wrote this content in Gutenberg, so it's added these extra spaces. Uh, you can tell ten up about that. And uh, and with that, uh, that's all we have time for today. Uh, there's many other WordPress plugins and web services that can be used similarly. Um, but I encourage you next time you open up Microsoft Word or Google Docs you might want to consider if you could actually uh, accomplish the same thing directly in WordPress and it might not be more uh, advantageous. Hey, uh, thank you for your time and I hope you enjoyed this and uh, hopefully there's some questions. Thanks for your time and for listening in. We hope this gives you a better idea how WordPress can also de demo <laughs> democratize the other publishing or the offline publishing and giving you a bit of a taste of some of the tools that are available. Um, so you can contact Hugh or myself if you want to, or email or Twitter. And uh, we're interested to hear what questions you have or ideas you have about how WordPress can uh, better um, uh, achieve this, this idea of offline publishing. Thanks. All the best.